Hello and welcome to another episode of Bevy Basics. In this episode, we'll be showing off texture atlases. Uh, these can be very useful tools in making 2D games more than 3D games, mostly because uh, in 3D games like you could use them for uh, UI and other things like that. But in 2D games, they're like they're used like for animations and all sorts of different things like levels and also. But that doesn't mean that they don't come up in 3D games. Like Minecraft uses texture atlases, or at least it used to. This video comes as a suggestion from. Uh, literally a cat in my discord and the link to my discord is in the description if you have any suggestions on things that you want to see as bevy basic videos or other content you want to see on the channel or if you just want to drop in and say hi i uh, don't promote my discord nearly as much as i probably should so let's get started with the texture atlas what exactly are they a texture atlas is an image made up of smaller images or tiles that can then be used in your game by basically referencing where in the larger image the subsequent image can be found as I mentioned earlier, older versions of Minecraft use this for the blocks, where each block was stored in the same texture, and the block ID was used to look up where in the texture the actual image that was displayed on the block could be found. Another option is to store items inside a texture atlas so that, say, all of your shovels are in one image and then the different type of shovel is used to work out what image to display in the inventory. Or you can do animations, which is a very common thing in 2D games, where each cell of the texture atlas is a different frame of the animation, and then you'll do something like the rows will represent each frame, and then the columns will represent like each set of animations, so like walking, running, jumping, all that sort of thing. And uh, again, this all applies to 3D, but it tends to be... Uh, like a 2D uh, application of this sorts of that. So with the basics of what a texture atlas is, how do we use them in Bevy? Well, there's two ways of getting access to a texture atlas in Bevy. The first is to pre-make it in any sort of text editing, GIMP, Photoshop, whatever you use to make your um, images. And you can like, most of these will have like a grid function that lets you display and work out like where each cell is. And then you can color it in or you can pre-make something that is certain cell sizes and draw them in. And then when we get into Bevy, we use the asset server to load them and then spawn it in. I'll go into more detail when we get to the specific section. The other option is to dynamically create them at runtime and then use a texture atlas builder to like bake all of them together or load a bunch of separate images and then bake them all into a single texture atlas that we then will go through the same process of using in our game. So let's go through the first and more common path, which is just to load a pre-existing texture atlas. So on the screen, you can see my example. We are spawning a sprite bundle and giving it the atlas as a texture. So this would normally just display the entire image on the screen of the whole texture and is how you would load just a general image. We're using the asset server to load a pre-existing file and Bevy will take care of the rest. We then attach a second component called texture atlas where we need to provide what is called a texture atlas layout. This is the way we describe how the texture atlas is actually like laid out inside of the image and where the different frames can be found. So Bevy provides a couple of built-in layout functions, but it is possible to create an entirely custom layout that may have certain sections of sprites overlap. For this example, we're using a grid layout. So Bevy provides a constructor for this, which we provide with five parameters. The first is the size of each cell, which in this case is eight by eight. Then the number of rows, which is 15, the number of columns, which is 10. We might have that backwards. I, I can never remember rows or columns. And then in this particular example, they have a padding of one, which means that between each cell and the next cell, there is one pixel gap. And the final parameter is the offset, which is if we had some kind of like flowery border so that our picture looked nice, or um, for whatever reason, we wanted to, to move our objects away from the edges, we can use the offset to start a certain number of pixels in from the top left corner. And that is all we need to create a layout, which we then add to the asset server in order to get a handle because we need to actually provide a handle to the texture atlases. So if you wanted to use the same layout in multiple places, you would load it or create it and then uh, copy the handle around rather than doing what I'm doing here where we're creating it and adding it in the same step. And then finally, we provide an index, which is a specific cell in the layout. So in this particular case, we're specifying zero, which is the top left cell. But if we put one or it would be the next one over. And if we put 15, it'd be the second down most to the left, which is that's like spring pad down. And then so you can work out which idea it is, or you could come up with some kind of system that 
dynamically selects the ID, which if you look in uh, my GitHub repos, you can find like an animation system that does this where you specify uh, like which cell it selects and like the animation system will work out what animation cell to display. Up next, we have the approach of building our own custom text atlas, which is actually, I think what um, literary cat was asking about. So the first thing we need to do is create some images. So in this case, we I'm just put the comment, we create a load. The option here is you could use something like dynamic noise or um, something like any kind of procedural image generation technique to generate an actual image at runtime. Or you could simply call the asset server to load a bunch of files, wait for them to load, and then build your own texture atlas. Uh, I think I did this in my Minecraft clone where I built the texture atlas at runtime out of the individual sprites because Minecraft moved away from having a singular sprite sheet down to having individual sprites that I'm assuming Minecraft probably bakes together at runtime, which made modding more uh, modular and stuff and allowed for like texture packs and stuff to modify very specific things. So then to create our texture atlas, we need to create a texture atlas builder and then we add all our images. So in this case, we're just adding the singular image. And you can also provide a handle. This is for later when you uh, bake the texture atlas together. If you don't provide handles, you have no way of knowing what index the specific image you gave it will end up at because it will try and, I guess, compact the uh, file as much as it can to make a square image that contains all of your images. And... If you don't provide handles, you, I guess, just have to index through them to work out which one, or maybe they'll be in the specific order. I'm not entirely sure how Bevy bakes them together, but if you provide a handle here, you can then use that handle to request the specific ID of that image later. Finally, once we've added all the images, we call build, and build will return a layout and the final finished image. This does return a result with the possibility that you've provided images in the wrong format will return an error or if there's not enough space because you can specify in the builder the maximum size that the image can be like width and height and that means that if you tries to pack all the images together and says like there's not enough space it'll return a not space error and if you have images i'm assuming of mismatched format rather than any specific format that bevy doesn't accept it'll complain because you can't just push model image formats together and Bevy doesn't seem to try and convert between the types. Once you've done that, we just do the same process as we did with the spawning, but instead of using the asset server to load, we just add the image to our assets and add a layout to our assets, and everything else stays exactly the same as if you were using a pre-built outlet. As I mentioned, you can entirely build a custom layout, so this is not necessarily the best sprite for it, or sprite for it, but in theory, you could say this set cell here is one and then this is like the right corner. But then you could also say that this entire two by two section is the whole block and make that its own cell instead of having a separate image that is the whole block if you were to design like your game to use that style of image creation. And finally, if we want to change what specific image is being viewed on our texture atlas, we just query the texture atlas itself and change the index. So in this example, we... Uh, I guess every frame, I don't know when this function would run, but we iterate through all texture atlases and then we increment the index by one and modulo 10, which would, in theory, if we had a 10 frame animation, cause that animation to run on a loop because it would increment up and then reset back to the beginning every time and you would end up with like a little 10 frame animation. Uh, this is probably not the best way. I don't think Bevy will crash if you use the wrong index, but it's possible that issues will occur if you go out of bounds on the index and stuff. And I think that pretty much wraps up everything that is related to texture atlases and Bevy, at least for this video. I may have missed some stuff because I don't really use texture atlases and so I'm not as familiar with texture atlases as I am with other topics in Bevy. If you've enjoyed the video, please do uh, like and subscribe and share the video. It does help the channel grow. And if you'd like to support me over on Kofi, I do have that and... There's some like interesting perks that I've come up with for Kofi supporters and uh, feel free to go on the Discord and make any requests for future videos or anything like that or catch me on a live stream when I'm making something. I hope you've all enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.